Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are back with another exciting episode of Europa Universalis 4 Great Britain Gets Its Ass Kicked by Iberians. Um, yeah, where we last left off, uh, the Iberian Peninsula was like, hey jerks, we're gonna want to, I believe, purge British Columbia of their heresy, which as we all know, is Protestant. Just like most of our colonies, except for the ones that are Catholic. Uh, and so this war is not going very well. <laughs> Turns out, our glorious leaders, the great generals of the uh, of British history of the 17th century, who conquered vast swathes of Africa, India, and Java, um... Turns out all those leaders that we bought kind of kept us behind in the old tech department to the point where we're sitting at a stellar 22 in the military tech, whereas our opponents, Spain and Portugal, are sitting at 24. So what this means, there's a lot of factors behind military tech that aren't just tech level, right? So you can see here we're working on getting the cartridge. And, you know, we're a bit behind, considering the description for this mentions the 1620s, and it is now uh, 1703. Go ahead, send another colonist there, and hopefully these two pop up something good, because fish and grain, it's not, it's not what I want. Anyway, military tech levels, and I don't know if there's a good way to show this. Um, if it's clear in any way, I'm not sure, but okay. So, I mean, here we can see that we're sitting at a military tactics level of 2.5 level 23. It goes up another half. So because we're on the other side of 23 and Spain and Port, well, we're on one side, Spain and Portugal are on the other. They've got an improved tech rating. So, as we can see here, military tactics reduce the damage your units take in combat. The higher it is, the better. So we're not doing well there. We do have good discipline, which is great. Yay! But, you know, there's a lot of other things going on. Um, making us not exactly be in a good military situation. Now, the annoying thing is... Well, there's a lot of annoying things. One of them is this whopping Spanish army that's marching around that I can't kill. Even if they set themselves up and spread themselves out, there's no killing them because they're such a higher tech level than us. So really, they want to show their superiority and I would imagine change the religion of British Columbia. But if I go and I say, hey, you know, suggest an offer. There's nothing. They're not going to accept anything that we can offer. So I have no idea what the end game for Iberia is here. Um, we did get a little moral victory out of this, though. We did take Timaru and New Caledonia, and I'm noticing that those silly Portuguese have set up yet another colony in Arorangi, and our forces are not that far away. In fact, they're really not that far away. So, let's go and teach them a lesson. Now, this is the only territory that I'm actually able to take, is unclaimed colonial lands. Um, because if I get into a fight with any sort of Spanish military, where I don't have ridiculously superior numbers, we're going to lose. So, that's not good. Um, hmm... What are you? You are a diplomat, so we're going to set up a new military candidate. So we need we need the military power out in the colonies. So uh, as you can see, I've taken a little bit of Spanish lands here. The Portuguese actually have a force. But it is smaller than what I've got in India, but not by enough. So, yeah. There's that. Um, we're slowly marching up the, uh, the side of Portuguese South Africa, but I've just noticed a stack of 28 Spanish men right there. So this colony is not going to last. They've taken our African colony and basically most of British Columbia. We were getting a good fight in with New Spain uh, from British Mexico, but that ended because 
British Mexico kicked their ass a bit too effectively, then they had to leave. So this is where we're at now, just really allowing the Spanish and the Portuguese to just siege whatever it is they're going to siege. Um, and they can siege land much quicker than I can. So, you know, keep that in mind, too. It's not a good war. And I was really contemplating doing something else entirely today, but I went with it. Went with my, uh, my little adventure, because I'm convinced that we can... We can change the outcome here. Well, maybe not of the war, but we can certainly turn Britain around. It's only 1703. Yeah, fucking deal with it. Oh, my troops are on the other side of it. That's fine. The Spanish are going to have to come through then. We'll just keep sieging down. We'll just keep going until we hit the Lagio Bay. That's the plan there. Come on, we're almost there. And I probably shouldn't be spending my military tech points on capturing colonies, but screw it. It's the easiest way to take land and expand way out here. Blampanigan? No! Thankfully, it doesn't look like they actually revolted. Good, because I want to keep Blampanigan. I know I'm not going to be able to keep that colony, but I like keeping it. It's a fun word to say. So we're just going to pop ourselves into this little section of Portuguese land. Uh, yeah, so you see, 155 days and the Spanish have sieged Cornwall from hunger or something. Whereas we've been here for ages and um, they're holding out pretty well. I guess with that new military tech, they've got new rations, I would suppose. Revolt and Gwynedd. Oh, good. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Freaking Welsh patriots. I'm going to nip that in the bud right now. Siege of Benegul. All right. Oh, well, that's them. But where are you going to go? You should go north. Head north. Go north. They're not going to go north. Go back there, although that's kind of a pointless endeavor. And we have taken that land excellent all right so we're gonna keep sending people there however i do think these will remain portuguese or in this case spanish or castilian so that's a little annoying should have probably read that pop-up but hey screw it let's see is this a new one it is it is it is let's go take it Ooh. Gonna have to stop by these ones first. Oh, that's Muscovy. Okay, so we're not messing around with them. Although I am curious, what's Muscovy's military tech level? Even the Russians are ahead of us, and they're not even the Russians, they're Muscovy. Wake Island, right. Good. Right, because we want to slowly get... <gasps> what is this? Those are the Netherlands? Damn, we're not at war with the Netherlands. All right. Well, that's okay. And this is indeed Spanish, right? Or, no, that's Muscovy. That's Muscovy. False alarm, gentlemen. False alarm. Just head back this direction. You guys willing to make some sort of peace agreement yet? No. You're really not. Is there, is there something I can give you? We can concede defeat and we can transfer trade power. That's still not going to be enough, and I'm willing to bet that that's going to set it up to a thousand because they're not going to want gold. So I don't know what they want. I'd, I'd really rather not release nations. I don't think I'm in a position where I would have to. Um, I suppose I could cede colonial land, but that would, you know, that is going to, if that's going to be the case, then that's going to be the case, and I'll have to give it up. But loans coming due already? We got two years left. But yeah, and we're taking out more loans because that's the state of our economy. Man, <laughs> the 18th century sure started with a uh, horrible realization of gross mismanagement at the highest level. <laughs> well, that's okay. We can rectify this. Britain can still be a great power, damn it. Peasants in Northumberland. Why not? Why not? Those guys recovered. 
So we'll go take care of those peasants. Really appreciate it, Spain, if you would just take London and end this stupid war. Gulf of Cadiz. That is not good. So I do believe that means the, uh, the Royal Navy's dead. So there's some more restructuring we're going to need to do. Let me just double check that. Check our fleet count. Oh, yeah. That's, that's sad. Right on. Keep going, little army that can. Yeah, you're of course going to be a dick about things. Uh, no, those are heavy frigates. Those are actually useful ships. I'd rather not sacrifice them. So let's see if I can send these guys over to Elephant Hills and link up with the uh, Madagascar fleet. Damaraland. Okay, so the rebels came along. That's fine. They're Portuguese rebels, so they can do whatever they want to do. Now maybe we'll see a free and independent South Africa that I can take pieces of in 10 or 20 years. Once I've matched their tech level. As sad as that is. Alright, what have we got going on here? We can get these guys off of transport. Fish, tariffs on copper, we'll just take the administrative points, and a revolt in Yorkuts. I don't, I can't even see it. But I'll take your word for it, game. You tend to know what's up. Got a little army sitting around here. We've got a big army sitting around here. I stand corrected. As if we can't use this power, this newfound wonderfulness. The Siege of Yorkuts. I'm guessing that's good. I don't know. I can't see it, so... Just tell me that it's a good thing. Where are you going, Newfoundland? Man, the five colonies. Well, hold on now. If we can keep... <clears throat> if we can keep this army together... I'm going to march them up that way. The War of Jenkins' Ear, which merged into the War of the Austrian Succession, was the result, among other things, of a minor alleged confrontation between Spanish Garda Costas and the captain and crew of the Glasgow brig Rebecca in 1731. Captain Jenkins claimed that, whilst in the Caribbean, his ship had been boarded by the Garda Costa and his crew maltreated, and that the Spaniards had then cut off one of his ears. Additionally, he claimed, he was tortured and threatened with death. There were no major actions fought during the war, although the declaration of war led to the dispatch of Anson's squadron to attack the coast of South America and finally circumnavigate the globe. And Admiral Edward Vernon's fleet attacked Spanish territory in the Caribbean. Use it as an excuse for war, gain a stability, and we gain a cause belli on Spain, which is fine because we're at war with Spain. Or we could not really sever relations too much. No, we're going to take that stability. Thank you. And the Spanish have insulted us. Well, we're at war, so that's kind of to be expected. It's rare to trade pleasantries while you're fighting someone. Siege of Damalaran. Yeah, that's fine. You just keep doing your thing, rebels. You keep taking that territory from those evil Spaniards and Portuguese. I guess in this case it is the Portuguese. Right, this is looking good. This is looking good. These 31,000 troops are staying together. That'll be enough to show those Floridians, Floridites? What are people from Florida called? Should really bring that down as much as we can. This war exhaustion is not fun. All right, so we got that. Revolt in Bengal Delta. All right, well, these are all Spanish people it's in Spanish lands. So, that's fine. They can deal with all those problems that we're causing them. <clears throat> just as long as we can happily keep our colonies. Which I wonder, can I just give those back? Uh, offer tribute. No. No, I cannot. Alright, and there's still... 
clear that offer, there's still nothing that they want. So I don't, I don't understand what's going on with this war. Just want it to end. I'll give them anything, really, provided it's not a chunk of Great Britain. These lands are off limits. Everything else, fine. You want to convert British Columbia? You do that. You want to... We are just hemorrhaging money. <clears throat> I suppose we don't have any trade fleet up. Oh, good. Good. So we can see... I don't know if I somewhere around the way lost most of that military stack, but um, 8,000 troops certainly put me in my place. There's really nothing I can do. Yeah, I go back to button land. There we go. That's about the extent of the damage I can deal to Spain and Portugal. Of course, I could come in and um, siege these few places. But, I mean, I really... I can't gain anything from it. And, in fact, even going after those Indian colonies up there and, and, and really these... Colonies in Java over here. A little bit silly. A little bit a little bit brash, maybe. Um, yeah, there's not much. Not much can be done. Uh, 12 heavy ships up against 46. I'll drop the troops off in Ceylon first and then see if I can't at least knock that Portuguese fleet out. And then, basically, it's it's just going to be a matter of waiting. I don't know if investing in ideas is a good idea at the moment. <laughs> to be honest, I doubt it. Oh, look at that. Good, you're not taking a stupid route. I'm, I'm pleased with you, Indian Squadron. You're learning. Siege Bengal Delta. That's fine. I mean, at least a war, it lowers our war score, so we'll get a better chance of a peace agreement floating our way eventually. And uh, it gives the Spaniards something to deal with. So I'm all okay with that. Are you guys quite done yet? Like, you haven't gone near Magdalena, for instance, yet you've got 13,000 troops just sitting in the middle of our colony in lands you've already taken. So I don't understand what the end game is here. I mean, you've got a freaking massive stack of military officers just sitting in Cornwall. Go to Essex. We've got blockades up around the Irish Sea and the Dogger Bank. Okay, okay. Oh, good. Octavius, we've got a lot of Roman names showing up for our... Um, future rulers. Siege of Cherokee. Well, that's good. Like, British Mexico. And th for obvious reasons, they've been doing a great job of keeping their military technology. In fact, all of my colonies look like they've been doing a great job of keeping their military technology ahead of the home country. So well done, guys. Okay, good. You are taking that. So considering the reason for going to war was this, presumably once this last fort gives up the ghost, they'll have some sort of demand coming to me. I would imagine. Uh, Spain is a larger army, of course. Past the abolition of slavery. Uh, native assimilation in Damak, that's fine. I'm, I'm going to hold off on that abolition of slavery. Not because I believe in it, but because shaking up the country right now is probably not a good idea. We got tons of rebels, my god. Alright guys, good work. Good work. How's our troops in button land? We got some more stuff going on. This is good in a way, but in another way it's just gonna drag this whole conflict out. So I'm not sure it's a good thing. Let's see if we can assist our colonial allies. 
Brothers in arms. That's going to take forever to get. So one feature in this situation, thinking about it, one feature that would be nice. If your colonial nations are ahead of you in a tech, for a hit of prestige, you should be able to get to that level. Uh, keep a military candidate going. So you guys keep the same man. He's doing good things for your region. But yeah, that is something that I wouldn't mind seeing. The Siege of London, 87 days. So you can see here what I mean. Um, we've got better discipline than them, so that's good. Their morale is much, much higher. Uh, which is from technology, basically. And you got Spanish traditions, military drill, army traditions, prestige, and increased defensiveness. I don't know why that matters in an offensive campaign. Whereas we've got technology, army, tradition, and prestige. So that's the thing. Not to mention the atrociousness of our war exhaustion. Which, um, yeah, it is pretty bad. There we go. Just chill out, everybody. Not that it matters in this case. Right? Like, those guys are still, are still doomed. And we don't even really do any damage. So, it's, it, I mean, there's, there's not even really a point in fighting, is what, is what I'm getting from this. Now, I don't know about their naval tech, but 46 heavy ships. Yeah. That's right, Portuguese. Where'd you go? Where'd you run off to? Oh, they're still there. Uh, 9th of July. When do you get there? 11th of July. So you're going up that way? Yeah, 13th. You're out of there on the 18th. Oh, no, you don't. Another revolt. Great. All right. So that showed them, right? Okay, and rebels have taken over Blambanigan. It's a shame. Again, we'll see where that leads. Uh, we'll see where that leads to Spanish. Oh, good, more fish. Wonderful. These are definitely spicy islands. What do we got? Is this a peace offer? Oh, it's a peace offer from Spain. So this is going to be a separate peace. Which sucks. Because I don't think the Portuguese are going to want to actually negotiate anything at the moment. Um, yeah, you see the Portuguese, they're, they're still not willing to, to negotiate anything, but we can get Spain off our back. Now, in the previous episode, we had France jump in in a colonial war. <clears throat> and so we just paid them off. We didn't even give them the colonial land. We're just like, here, take 1,700 ducats. This looks to be like the same sort of thing that we're going to wind up doing here with the Spanish. Now, they want Magdalena, which is yarn, a base tax of three, and they're English and Protestant. That's all good to give up to a Catholic Iberian nation. Um, they could have asked for a lot more expensive land from British Columbia, that is for sure. Now, one of the nice things about this is that I can probably use my diplomacy to be a little bit sneaky and continually cause revolts and have that land just come back to me naturally. Or have it as a cause for war later when I'm at the same tech level as the Spanish. Regardless, we're going to accept this. And then we're going to have to come along and take out two more loans just to float us till the end of the war. Now, the big issue with doing that is Spain was doing most of the fighting in the war for the Portuguese. Um, 
as you can see now all of great britain is back to being mine which is good we'll send those guys back down to london um most of the occupied territory in fact has returned so it's now just a case and i can't believe we got away with that that is amazing Hopefully this turns out producing something better than yarn, although with an income of zero, not holding my breath. Um, but yeah, that actually turned out okay. We didn't lose much. And we'll be able to retake it at some point. That'll, that will return to British Columbia. But now the question is, what are the Portuguese going to do? Because they haven't really been fighting. Good fish. Uh, political crisis. We will take the legitimacy hit. Form the League of Ausberg. Alright. Not sure what the League of Ausberg is, but perhaps it would be an anti-Holy Roman Empire thing. Let me just take a look. Could, but no, those are just Hungarian lands. So, I'm not really sure what that is, and I feel like I should know it. Because we're getting into an area of time where I should know things. <laughs> but hey, apparently I don't. Uh, so yeah, Portugal, what's, what's the plan here? Your war enthusiasm is low, our war enthusiasm is low. What do you want? Transfers 50% of its trade power to Portugal in trade nodes where they both have power. This will remain active for the duration of the truce. Great Britain will pay another 1,300 ducats. Yeah. I mean, that's not really negotiable. So, okay. There we go. We've recovered. Kind of. Um, military candidate. Let's see if they wind up going to war with Spain. Uh, regardless, we're going to need to take out a loan. This is really not going to help. And then we're going to have to just see once things tick over into the new year. How bad is this? So we're losing quite a lot. Why? Colony? Oh, yeah. All the <laughs> right. All the colonies I took. <laughs> oh, I did not think that one through at all. All right, guys. Well. Even that doesn't put us in the clear. So, for the first time in a long time, we're going to have to drop our military maintenance down. We'll put it to about half. It's really not that it matters. And our inflation is through the roof. All right, let's reduce that. So, that helped a little bit. How bad are our, is our loan situation? Eight loans. I don't know how many I can actually take out, but eight seems like a safe number. Okay, so... With this situation sorted. Now, anywhere where Portugal has trade power, they're getting half of our money. So, this makes me think that while I'm desperate for cash, it's probably not a good idea to increase my trade anywhere. I don't, I don't think there's any spot in the world that I'm in, well done British Columbia, um, that Portugal isn't. And yeah. So we're not exactly all that keen on expanding our trade presence at the moment. We will be once the truce expires, obviously, because then once the truce expires, we can start making our own money again. 
instead of giving half of it to Portugal. I can only hope that um, this increase... Right, so we need to get you over there. The only transport fleet I have is in India. I'm not about to move those ancient decrepit ships over, so we need five... So we will go one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. And this will be the beginnings of the rebuilding of the Royal Navy. I think this is the third time I've had to rebuild the freaking thing. But, um, yeah. We'll figure that out. And I don't. I honestly don't even know where to start rebuilding. Um, we're in such a bad way right now. <laughs> oh my God! National banks in trouble. Siege of War Odugu. Why are you in War Odugu? Our national bank is doing very poorly. It is finding it hard to lend to reliable people and running into difficulties. Well, we could always bail it out. Or we can cause inflation. There. Sorted. <laughs> um, what am I going to do in Warodugu? <laughs> okay, let's take a look. What do you want? Less in taxes until 1817, so that'll just be a local tax modifier. Okay. Congratulations. You're not paying much in tax. Have we only got the one colony producing slaves? So it might not be a bad idea to actually pass the abolition of the Slavery Act then. Granted, historically, it's about a hundred and... 10-ish years early. I think Britain originally ended the slave trade in 1860. Have more heavy ships and light ships than 50 each. We can do that. We can do that. Um, but if you got a military candidate, we don't need that anymore. Not in Cuba. Uh, no. We'll wait for the Castilian La Plata army to leave Magdalena, and then we can start really angering the Spanish. British Columbia, if you want to take care of your little rebel problem, that'd be cool beans. Go ahead, give them free taxes or less taxes or whatever. That's fine. I don't care about that. So I don't think, oh no, these are growing a little bit. Just not exactly at the rate one would want them to. Same with these guys. Oh no, those are full on shrinking. Are all of them shrinking? All of them are shrinking. Son of a bitch, I don't want that. I want my colonies to actually stay growing. Still minus 29 a year? Are you kidding me? Okay, we can trim that down. How's that looking now? 50, 80 a year. How about these guys? 88. Okay, well, at least they're still growing then. Although it feels like we lost one of those colonies somewhere, and I'm not sure where... Wake Island is still going, so that's good. Can we get to Hawaii? All right, let's at least do this. Get over there, Frobisher. Take you two and a half freaking years to get there. But that's fine. Oh, Sunda. You were producing fish anyway, so I don't really care about that. Once the max done, we'll send you over and finish that up. Ugh. Ugh. Uh. 
All right. Well, it's been a draining episode, ladies and gentlemen. Just give me the fleets. Just give me the fleets. There you go. Come on. That's five. Um, yeah, sure, why not? And we've got, what, 29,000 troops? Well, that's not a very round number, is it? Actually, looking at it, our administrative and diplomatic tech look okay, so... We can st keep spending those tech points to lower inflation, because that's going to be important. Oh, I guess we've got one more horsey than we wanted. Okay, well, we can... Just do that. So, let's see. We've got 36 and 4. That looks like a good number. And let's make sure that we're not wasting any money on leaders we don't need. So, Mr. Howe, you are done. And Hugh Middleton, where are you located? You're located there. Oh. Uh, I guess we'll base you out of New York. And actually, let's just take a quick look at how our vassals are feeling about us. So, 60... Neighboring heretic religion, colonial ties. Yeah, well, that could be better. Could be a lot worse, too. Anyway, I feel like that's enough excitement and fun for one day. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Yeah, that seems like a good place. And next time, we can sort of concentrate on rebuilding making England, Great Britain, great again. So thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.